Hi, I'm Willie Orts and my wife Connie Orts. Behind the camera there we have Orts's Crooked Creek Farm. Um, we raise alpacas and we have a small produce market. We grow some produce and we also grow microgreens and we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but right now I'll show you in the market some of the things that we grow and some of the things we buy locally from our farmer friends. This is our market. Orts' Crooked Creek Farm Market. It's just a small market in here, Petersburg, Ohio. And you'll see some of the things that we're selling to our friends, the neighbors, uh, some green peppers. And this will be the last of them for this year. These are hot peppers. Some of the other things we grow are we have tomatoes and there's different kinds of squash. This is a spaghetti squash. These are acorn squash. We have butternut and we got some really neat pumpkins for uh, Halloween. This is a blue pumpkin. And if you look what Connie has done with this one, that's Frankie. <laughs> So we talked a little bit about what we grow. Um, like I say, we raise alpacas for fiber, which we use in the yarn shop. And we can show you some yarn and some uh, garments that Connie makes and her friend Deneen at Farmhouse Yarn. But uh, this is some of the microgreens I'm growing. This is a basil. And uh, each week we grow probably 60 to 70 flats of different microgreens and we take to the restaurants throughout the valley. This is some of our microgreens. Um, they're nutrient dense. And this is some that were just picked that um, you can use as a garnish or to add flavor or a lot of nutrition to your meal. This is one of the big things that we grow on our little farm. And we're not a big farm by any means. So this is like a, a huge, huge income for us. Um, this is quail eggs. This is kind of neat. We just started raising quail. We've always raised chickens, but these are quail eggs. Really high in nutrition. Again, they're real high in B12. They're great for eye health. And here they are compared to one of our hen's eggs. They're a little bit smaller. <laughs> but we like them. They're neat birds. Time of the year, you're going to see a lot of pumpkins and decorative gourds and things like that. Corn for Halloween. Um... All the, the local produce that's grown outside, we're just about coming to an end. We had a hard frost last night, but we wanted to talk about some of the things the other farmers do. Um, you're going to see a lot of uh, beans being harvested right now. Corn will be coming up, so you'll see the big combines, and everybody's trying to beat the winter to get everything picked. Um, this is something that my wife does. She, she uses some of the products from our market just like the apples over there, and she's making apple jellies, things like that. Here's an apple pie jelly, peach jam, something interesting. It's called corn jelly. It's made from corn, and actually this corn we got from Onar Farms right in, in Springfield Township. We have plum jelly, stone fruit. Here's a big seller is cherry jam. <laughs> and here's a really cool one. I think the kids would like watermelon jelly. <laughs> so our market, we try and feature the the farms in the area, our farm friends, the Monars, um, the Rainies. Um, there's just so many of them that we've known over the years. Uh, Brungars, Kohlers, we're, we're hoping to have some of their products in here next year because we started a little late this year. We have honey from our the Rob family farm. We have maple syrup. And actually in about four months, we'll be starting to make more maple syrup. And um, my wife has <clears throat> mixes that you can make chocolate chip cookies or biscuits, pancakes. And uh, like I say, this is what we do on our little farm. There's a lot of other types of farming but our big thing is like i say the produce the the alpacas 
and um, our microgreens is huge. We grow a lot of microgreens. So we'll have more to show you. Hi, this is Willie and Connie with Horses Crooked Creek Farm and uh, talked a little bit about microgreens in the market. Uh, we're gonna uh, plant some microgreens today and I'll show you how I do it and talk a little bit about it. So we're gonna be planting uh, today some cabbage, some kale, some radish, and some broccoli. Those are some of the ones we use for our restaurants. But uh, we'll start from the beginning. It's not a, it's not anything uh, difficult. It just takes a little time and care for the microgreens. They usually go about eight to ten days, and then we harvest. But so we're going to start here with this is the very beginning. We're going to put soil in our flats. We use ten by twenty flats. When we're really busy, we would be growing about sixty to seventy flats a week that our restaurants would use. The first thing we're gonna do is get some soil. This is a product, uh, it's from Roots Organic. It's an organic mixture, and then I have a little bit of extra stuff I put in there, some peat, things like that. So we're gonna put two scoops of soil. We're gonna break up any clumps and spread it around a little bit. Go for the next one. Think about the microgreens. When you plant them, they're only going to be in germination, which is when the plant, the seed is in dark. Maybe you could think of it in under the soil. It's in germination. It's only going to be there for about three days. Once it gets moist. It's going to start trying to grow. We'll show you what the germination is, and we have some pea tendrils, which is another popular micro that we sell. And they're all ready to put in the light, so that'll be kind of cool. We can show you that. Anyways, we're kind of getting the soil ready. I'm going to take and flatten it out real nice. This is kind of like my field, just on a smaller scale. <laughs> and get this all ready to plant the seeds. Notice you hear fans running in the grow room here. It's real important to have good air circulation, good airflow for the plants to be healthy. And there the seed is ready to be planted. We're going to do some cabbage. This is a red acre cabbage. It's real popular. I've been doing this so long I don't even measure anymore. I kind of can tell each seed by about how much I need. And you're just gonna lightly sprinkle this seed in here. You don't want it to clump. You just wanna spread it out real even. It kinda takes the human touch to do this. And like I say, I've been doing it so long. And there's the first flat. Seeds are ready. We'll do it again. So we get all these planted. Like I say, this is going to be cabbage in a microgreen form. We're only going to have this grow about eight to 10 days and it's ready for harvest. It's really nutrient dense and it's, it's a little different than what you uh, would think about a cabbage because it, as an adult, it's pretty big. It's about the size of a softball or even bigger. And you all know what cabbage looks like, but this has the same kind of flavor. There's all the seed. Now, we're gonna take and just tamp the seed a little bit. This kind of pushes the seed down into the soil. And 
these four flats are ready for some water. Okay, we're going to go ahead and label the flat. That way I know when I planted it, that gives me information as far as the length of time that it's taking to grow and things like that. We're going to do each one of these. And then we're going to water it. This is just kind of for my information. It helps if I need to know down the road as far as trying to get an idea of how long to leave things in germination and how long until I can cut it. Now we're going to water. It's not, not going to take a lot, but this is just like if it would rain. <laughs> and that's going to trigger these seeds to open up and start growing. I filter my water, even though this is city water, I like to run it through a filter just to make sure everything's good. All right, and then we're gonna stack these trays. This is important because we need some weight to make these seeds try and push. We're trying to push upwards. We need a little weight on it. So I'm going to put a couple of other flats on here. That's probably enough. And then we're going to put them in the germination room. This is the grow room where we grow everything with the lights. The other place we're going right now is the germination room. Okay, it's kind of dark in here. That's the reason behind that, this is where we're germinating. We're going to put all the flats in here, and they're going to be stacked. And I want to show you a little bit of what happens after germination in three or four days. These are pea tendrils, and uh, I have some weight on them here. We're going to get rid of the weight. What do you see underneath? These are pea tendrils. If you notice, they're actually pushing themselves up in the air. They're ready for light. So we'll take them in and water them, and we're going to put these guys in the light. These are peat tendrils. And I'll show you some here in a second of what they're going to look like after about 8 to 10 days. Okay, these are the peat tendrils we were talking about. You can see they've they're looking for the sun. So we're going to give them some artificial light, some water, peas take a little bit longer than the other microgreens, they're about two weeks for harvest, so that's the tough thing with what I'm doing, I'm trying to uh, guess when I would be harvesting for a restaurant, so I have to plan all this stuff out in advance. Anyways, I'll show you what some are going to look like. These actually have been harvested once, and then I'm growing them one more time. And that's your pea tendril. They're going to get up about this high when we harvest. I've got some other pictures of peas when we harvest the first day. But these, um, the tendril is this wee little... part of the plant, that is the tendril. And it can detect chemical and physical things to try and climb. It's, it's really kind of neat. But anyways, I grow these a second time through to get a twisted tendril and the chefs like that for when they plate up. It looks really nice. And uh, anyways, we're gonna put stuff in uh, germination and in about eight days, we're gonna be putting or, I mean, we're going to be putting in the light in about three days, but in about eight days, we're going to be harvesting. So a little bit about microgreens, and you all can uh, 
have your teachers teach you about the plants and the parts of the plants and things like that. It's, it's really kind of neat stuff. morning we're here at the farm and we're uh, talking to the girls here this morning this is our alpaca herd we've raised alpacas that's the other thing we do at our farm for around 14 years and yes they all have names and a lot of them know their names <laughs> alpacas are known for their fiber and that's why we raise them we turn the fiber into yarn and my wife spins it and uh, you can knit it into some nice hat or socks or a sweater or something like that. And that's what alpacas are used for. Hi, Sophie. This is Sophie. Alpacas like hay <laughs> and they're grazers. That's what they They graze on all kinds of grasses and things like that. But um, we just wanted to show you a little bit of the herd. 
and uh, this is our fun time. <laughs> <laughs> Here, guys, come on over and get some. Come here, Gemma. That's Soiree, the brown one. <laughs> and Sylvia, who else is here, huh? Oh, my. Oh, and you hear that noise? They hum. That's how they communicate. They have other little noises, but they mainly hum. Huh. Don't you? How about you, Suara? You want some? Gotta check it out first. This is Gemma and Rory and Suara and G, Sylvia. Anyhow, we wanted to show you our alpacas at the farm. Thought it'd be fun. It's a nice foggy morning here. But uh, hope you enjoyed it. Bye.